so beautiful Here in your holiness Lord, I want nothing less So I let my heart confess You are so beautiful Before your majesty You show me love when Probably a kid pulled this alarm <laughs> All right All right, we've had this happen before, so we're kind of kind of used to this. The sound might go off. Dylan is the hero of, the, of this entire school, so he's probably going to find the alarm. Or even Nico, he usually knows where the alarm's at too. I see them working. All right, probably just a couple more minutes. We do apologize for that, guys. I see, I see them. They're handling it back there. <laughs> Just a few more moments. We're good to go? Okay, all right. Okay. Well, I'm just going to kind of move forward, guys, because I know the alarm thingy is somewhere in the front where they could take it off, but... Well, I just want to thank everyone for being here this morning on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday, Mother's Day. And I was so, so nervous to preach today. And I had a few people ask me, are you nervous? Are you nervous? And I was like, I'm so nervous today because it's such a sensitive day, but also a, a beautiful day as well. So I just want to thank my husband, my pastor, my husband, for giving me the opportunity to, to share the word of God today. And I don't take it lightly as, at all, at all, especially when we're sharing the word of God. Um, all right, let's see. How are we doing back there, guys? <laughs> my kid pulled it. Just uh, bear with us for a couple more minutes. Okay preparation for uh, the fire you're about, you're about to preach. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> Let's give Eddie a hand, you guys. I don't feel alone up here. Have <laughs> Bubba and Eddie help me up here. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, well, while they're doing that, we can just kind of sit here awkwardly. <laughs> Because I don't want to, like, talk and y'all are like this. It's a painful. Oh, my gosh, yes! You may resume your regularly scheduled service. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I rebuke that in the Just name kidding. of Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> that is the enemy. That is the devil. That is a distraction. Oh, my God, the devil can distract us. He will use the littlest things to bring distraction. So many times from people hearing the word of God, he will bring a distraction. In Jesus' name, I rebuke that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, well, if it happens again, we're going to keep moving forward, guys. We're not going to give too much attention to that right now. Um, but today, I just, uh, just want to just thank the Lord so much because I was asking the Lord. I was like, Lord, oh, my gosh, this is going to be such a hard uh, day to just share because um, it's a new season that our family's in. And I was, like, trying to cry all in the green room earlier to get everything out and get everything out. My daughter's like, Mama, you're going to make your makeup run. I'm like, it's already running. <laughs> so it's already smeared and it's already a mess. But I'm just so grateful and so humbled and just, I was just thinking about, like, Lord, I thank you so much for this, just the opportunity and the privilege to um, just communicate your word today. And I do not take it lightly, church. I do not take it lightly. But the scripture that I want to share with you today was actually shared during our rally, so it was perfect. If you have your Bibles, um, if you have your phone or your Bible, or I think we have it on the screen as well. It's going to be Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. 
And it says, these commandments that I gave you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. Such a beautiful scripture. One of our women, our mothers today, shared during our rally. And it was right on time. I looked at Erin. I looked at um, Nikki. And I was like, oh, my gosh. That's like the word. That's one of the scriptures that we're going to be hearing today. But it's such a beautiful scripture. And I remember years ago, my... Um, my mother-in-law, who is with Jesus now, she is, I always say this, she's probably one of the best disciplers of women ever. And I, I had learned so much from her, my mom, my sister. We were in one of her discipleship groups, and they were, it was called Dulos. <laughs> it, was du- it was called Dulos. We had Dulos 1 and Dulos 2. <laughs> and so having a spiritual mom like her in my life is, was just it was just such a pivotal moment for me in my life to have such a woman of that caliber who loved Jesus so deeply. And she would shout it from the rooftops and was never, ever ashamed. And I think of this scripture, um, and I think of her, as, and it's because these scriptures have come alive today. And I see it in my children, and I see it in her children and her grandchildren and my nieces and my nephews. And it's a living legacy. And it's such a beautiful scripture, and this is something I want you to take home with you today. But we're going to talk for a little bit, um, and we're just going to talk about some seasons. And the topic that we're, we're still on, uh, family matters, and what I'm going to talk to you today about is sacred seasons. Sacred seasons. I know during motherhood and fatherhood and just parenthood altogether, there's so many different seasons that we go through, Right? And there's the good, there's the hard, there's the scary, there's the like, Lord, why me seasons. And um, maybe today, you're here today and you've recently found yourself in a state of unease. Or maybe you're home and your family dynamic, the dynamics are off. And you're like, Lord, what is this? What's happening? What's going on? Things are happening with our kids emotionally and socially that we just can't control. As it stands, maybe you're doubting yourself today, like me. I've doubted myself as a parent, as a mom, as a spiritual leader, as a spiritual mother as well. And as as a friend, maybe you're doubting yourself, especially about your effectiveness or your impact as a mom or as a leader in your home. As a disciple or maybe even as a spouse, we seem to be at a critical season with big changes that are coming and you can feel it. Sometimes I tell my kids or I tell my husband or I tell like my sister-in-law, I be like, I can feel something. Something's off. Have you ever get those feelings before? Something is off. What is that? And it's like I know that God has given me a spirit of discernment. So like when you walk in a room and you're just like, what is that? What is that? And you can feel it. And it's kind of like how it is in the seasons of, of parenting and of motherhood. And we go through those moments and you're like, Lord, what is it? Just show me. Just show me. In John 10, 10, it says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. Oh, how our life is extremely filled with so many different seasons. How many seasons do we have in a year? Four. Do you guys know the seasons? We're going to go back to school. <laughs> this is a kindergarten. Do we know our seasons? Say them out loud. Say them with me. Spring, winter, summer. That's good. They're out of order, but it's okay. Yes, that's, that's what they are. So, the, yeah, so they're, you got them. You got them. You got them. Good job, guys. Good students. So through the, through the, moon, the mundane t- daily chores, the teenage emotions, I have a house full of teenagers. And there is, that saying goes, there is no hood like motherhood. There is no hood like motherhood. I saw something, where was it, the other day I saw something, and it says, uh, us parents, we were raised in the, we're raised, us parents from the hood are raising some suburban kids. We ain't built for this. (laughs) And I was like, that is so true. Us parents, some of us maybe from the hood and we're raising some suburban kids. We ain't built for this. (laughs) 
They want Starbucks every day. Hello? Et Yo, our, oh, sorry. That was so ghetto. Yo. <laughs> we used to get our coffee, right? It was like $12. Me and my husband, it's 45 bucks now with our kids. Almost 50. I'm like, you don't need anything. You guys don't need your iced matcha latte. I'm sorry, Mike, Nelly. We turned Leia on to match iced matcha lattes, and it's so expensive. But it's like, Dane, what the heck happened? It just got so expensive. So I have a bunch of teenagers in my house. And I, I just, oh, my God, I'm so humbled. <laughs> the teenage journey and season is probably my favorite right now because I have, I'm learning as a parent so much about myself. The Lord is teaching me so much. And I'm just like, Lord, that is not funny. That is not funny. Why would you do this to me right now? And I'm so humbled. Malaya told me a couple um, a weeks ago, we were just, you know, we have our talks. She's 18. She's like a young adult now. And we're trying to, like, tra in that transition period, we're like, how do we treat her as a young adult but still keep her, like, she's our baby. And it's just such a weird season. And so she's like, Mama, you just need to trust that you raised us well. And I'm like, oh, my God. I felt like I got rebuked. I was on hush, and, and, and I was like, you know what? That's right. I did, we did a good job, right? And I was like, you know what? You are right. I didn't tell her that. In my head, I was like, you know what? That's right. Lord, when we had our children, my husband and I, we had our babies. We dedicated just like the moms and dads came up and y'all dedicated your babies today. Oh, that's such a beautiful thing. Such a beautiful thing. When we dedicated our babies, we were like, this child belongs to you, Lord. We are just a tool that we're, you're going to use our life just to mold and shape these babies. But they are ultimately yours. They are arrows in our quiver that one day they're going to be released. I usually wear a necklace and it has a little knife on there, like no cap for sure. It has a knife on there. And it's so cool. And I love it because I'm like, I have to remind myself where I come from. Like, don't let my dress fool you guys. Don't let my dress fool you. I have a little knife I carry on my necklace. And my kids got it for me. And I'm like, thank you for loving me for me and who I am. <laughs> but everyone goes through seasons. The hardest, coldest winters, the rebirth and renewal of spring, the fun, easygoing summer, right? And the hard work and the harvesting in the fall. How many love to have a garden or love to plant veggies and all those good things? I tried and I failed miserably. I had all those little big old caterpillars eating my tomatoes. I was like, what the heck are you? <laughs> Didn't work out. Didn't work out. As mothers, parents, or as Christians, we fill our season intensely through the trials and the joys of each season. It can even feel like we're moving through all of them all in a 24-hour period. Right? We can go through all these seasons in one day. We're like, what the heck's happening? The first season we're going to talk about is summer. Everyone say summer. Summer. It says in Ecclesiastes 8, 15, I commend the enjoyment of life. Because there is nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be glad. To be glad. That's my mom. She said amen back there. You know what's so funny was I was right here and uh, I was like, oh, my gosh, we forgot the oil. I forgot the oil, right? Forgot the oil for dedication. We didn't really forget it. But Art comes back there. He taps me. He goes like, this is from your mom. And it was an anointing oil. I'm like, of course my mom would come and save the day, right? <laughs> of course my mom. She always carries a bottle of anointing oil everywhere she goes. And so I tell my son, I'm like, get the anointing oil for mom. I know she has it in her purse. Sure enough, she did. Uh, we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded that it's okay to have fun. It's okay to have fun. We should enjoy our life and remember that God wants us to. We need to have sporadic dance parties in the middle of the kitchen. We need to buy maybe that puppy that your kids have been wanting. Right? We did. We caved. And I don't know if that's the best or worst decision ever, but we caved, got our kids the dog. 
We must cheer at their games and overdo it at times because our hearts are overflowing with love. I love to whistle because that's like the only thing I can do. My scream is kind of weird, but I know how to whistle. And so I love to whistle. I love to whistle so loudly because I want my kids to know, like, I'm rooting for you. It's so funny because when we're going to the grocery store, we're at a park, or we're, it does not matter where we are at. I would whistle in here, but it would probably hurt your eardrums. And I whistle to find my kids, right? I whistle, and all of a sudden, you just see all their heads turn. It, they can be so far, and I'll whistle, and they'll come, they'll come back running to me. <laughs> I've trained them very little to know my whistle. If mama did oh, teach our kids to love the house of God and every salvation that happens on Sunday and in between. Teach your kids to love the house of God. When I, I was looking up here at Say Say, worshiping with the other women of God, and I see Bubba. We call her Bubba. Her name's Malaya. And I see them up here, and I'm just like, Lord, I don't want to take for granted those moments. I don't want to take for granted those moments that just long, not long ago, my kids were just super little. And they were just, you know, like Bree and Eddie's kids and, and the little kids that on the Dream Team kids. They were here coming early in the morning, 7.30 in the morning, still with the sleepies in their eyes and their pajamas. But they're coming to church because their parents are serving the house of God. I was like, oh, I miss those days. I was there. I know what that feels like. Teach your kids to love the house of God. Teach them to love the house of God. If mama didn't do anything else, she's going to make sure that we were in the house of God on Sundays. Hello? If there's one thing she did, she made sure that we were in the house of God on Sundays. Summer is a season that nobody wants to end. I know, uh, not Pastor Mark, Uncle Mark, he loves summer. He hates winter. He does not like winter. I've heard him say it many times. He loves summer. Summer is the season. That's fun. Mom and dad make summer fun and awesome. But we should remember that summer never lasts. It never lasts. It's a season that comes to an end. Kids get ready to go back to school. They eventually get older. They start to look different. They start to get facial hair. And I'm like, what's happening, right? And Mikhail's getting little things all over his face, hair and here. I'm like, who are you? And he's getting taller. And every season it reminds me, Lord, time is getting shorter. Time is getting shorter. But we should remember that it never lasts. Eventually everyone gets tired. Everyone gets sunburned. Everyone has to go back to school. And the energy begins to fizzle out. The weather changes and reminds us that we will be soon in a, in a season of transition. And then comes, can you guess the next season? Fall. It's the fall season. Fall is hard work and harvest time. Maybe you're in a season of fall right now. You're, you're teaching your children. You're working hard in your marriage. And you're fighting and, you're, and you're, you're on your knees and you're crying. And you're like, Lord, what is happening? Lord, give me the strength to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Fall season is here. The season could look like maybe some late night cryings, some interceding and begging for God for that unsaved child or the restoration maybe of your marriage or maybe even to find a loved one. Lots of questioning and reasoning. Lots of questioning and lots of reasoning with God. Maybe slamming of doors of teenagers. Maybe take over. Maybe they're taking over, or uh, maybe they're maybe they're talking back more, or maybe they're just a little feisty, and you're like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. It's so funny because I think at one time when I was talking, I was so upset. I was so upset, and I think I said something about my dad. Woo! I said something about my dad, and. Uh, I was in the car with my mom. I was in the car with my mom. And she had this big old ruby ring right in the middle of her finger. And my mom and dad were not together. But I had said something really mean about him. And she goes, whack. <laughs> right? Don't you ever talk about your dad like that. This woman wasn't married to this man. This woman wasn't with this man at the time. But she showed me that I still need to honor my father. Oh, my gosh. I was so convicted. I'll never forget that day. And I, she goes, whack, don't ever talk about your dad like that. You know what? Kids these days, they need more spankings. <laughs> <I'm t> <laughs> Everybody who's clapping probably spanks their kids. <laughs> oh, my.
my gosh. You know what? <laughs> it's true, though. It really is. I think today... <laughs> I think, though, if we start to, you know, discipline our children, it, it's so important to discipline these kids. It's because they're running wild and they're, they're going, doing all these things. And you're know, like, what, where are their parents, right? Sometimes I'm nosy. I am so nosy when it comes to, like, people on the streets or kids acting up in the store. I'm like, ooh, uh-uh, don't be doing that. And I'm like, are you, are you serious? And I'm like... <laughs> I feel, I come to the mom, I'm like, I, it's okay, I, I got you, it's all right, I understand, I understand, I'm going to pray for you, but I'm like, some of these kids, they just need a little, a little, mm, right on their behind, just take your little chancla off or a ruler and just go, just straighten them out, just a little bit, just, you got to remind them who's boss, you got to remind them who's the leader in the house, mm -mm. all right, maybe, <laughs> y'all bad, stop egging me on. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. And it's not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, unless your kid pulled your hair or bit you or something. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does but delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, it always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Much like a tree trying to hold on the leaves, it's so silly to try and hold on to resentments and bitterness and arguments. There's a tree in our backyard and when I'm washing dishes, I'm like washing dishes. I like to get up really early because the house is quiet and I just kind of like to be by myself. I like my time. I like my face. And so when I'm in there, I'm in the kitchen washing dishes. There's just one tree. I don't even know if it's our tree. I think it's a neighbor's tree. But I just love to look at the tree. And it's not this beautiful tree. It's not a glamorous tree. What's so unique about this tree is that it is always on time with the season. These leaves change from this bright, beautiful orange red color. And I'm like, oh my gosh, fall is coming. It's time to start baking. It's time to start, you know, getting on your fat girl clothes and leggings and t-shirts, right? It's starting to be that season. It reminds me. <laughs> and so, and then it starts, the leaves start to go away. And I'm like, oh, winter, winter, right? There's a thing, winter depression. There's a thing, it's a winter, it's called winter depression. There's some people who just don't like winter, and they go through these, you know, these seasons of, seasons of depression and just like, man, I don't like it. I need the sun. I need the sun. And so I, the seasons start to change, and that tree reminds me all the time. I, it's a new season. My kids are getting older, another year older. They're not getting younger. And, and I'm always, like, reminding myself, God, let me make these days count. Let me make these days count with my kids. We only get, what, 18 summers with them. Maybe, yeah, that's right. We only get so many summers with our children. Parents, make it count. Make it count. Go back to Deuteronomy and read those scriptures. Keep them on your heart, on the, on the doorposts of your heart and your home. And, and memorize scriptures with your children the best that you can. Have the family devotions when you, as much as you can. Have the family dinners as much as you can. The other day, we were uh, a couple days ago on Friday, I believe, um, there was just no, it was no special day, but... All the kids, all my kids decided to just kind of get around the island there. And we're just talking, just chatting it up. And I text my husband. I was like, babe, come out here. You're, you're missing out. And he was like, missing out on what? I'm like, nothing. We're just talking. But just the importance of gathering together and just hearing our kids talk. And just hearing them talk about the Lord or talk about their day at school or the things they didn't like or the things that they're struggling with. Make it a habit to gather with your, friend, with your, with your family because the seasons are changing. And it's too, time is just going so fast to hold on to resentment and bitterness and anger. Maybe you have that with a loved one. Maybe you have that with your mom today. Maybe you have that with your sister or your grandma or whoever it may be. Let us persevere through the long season with hope and steadfastness and show our children to do the same. To do the same. We have to teach our kid the best place. This is what I'm learning right now. And uh, I was really like asking the Lord. I was like, God, 
help me to be sensitive to this day today and help me to, you know, uh, choose my words very carefully because there's a lot of people that are still grieving. Maybe they lost their mother and um, maybe they could not ha be a mother and, and carry a, a child in their room or maybe they did and maybe they lost, they lost their child. And so I was like, Lord, give me wisdom, give me wisdom because I want to always make sure that, you know, what, what we say is going to help change a life and it's not going to hurt somebody. But the best place to minister is from your, pa your place of pain. Some of the things that we go through are not new in the history of humanity or even for God. It's just new characters in the story. And so the pain that most are going through or some people that are going through today, God knows what we're going through. God knows what you're going through. And it's such a hard, hard thing to carry when we have lost a, a, our mom. Maybe you've lost your sister or even a mom has lost their child. It's such a sensitive, sensitive thing. If you feel stuck, it's because you stopped moving. How many ever just felt stuck in their life before? Oh, my gosh, I have felt stuck. I think it was probably when I turned 32, maybe around 32. I was questioning the call of God in my life. I was like, Lord, am I really supposed to be doing this? God, do you really want me to be serving and doing this and doing, you know, doing what I'm doing in the ministry? I began to question the call of God in my life. I felt so stuck. And the reason why I felt stuck was because I stopped moving. I stopped moving. I just became stagnant, and I just stood there. And I didn't, tr you know, try to grow. I, I understand the feeling of not wanting to get up in the morning. Moms, I get that. You don't want to get up in the morning because the dishes are calling you or the piles and piles of laundry. Um, I love to wash clothes. I don't like to fold and put away. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thanks for not letting me fill them. I love to wash clothes, but I don't like to put them away. And I'm like, Lord, deliver me. <laughs> deliver me from this, right? Oh, my gosh. My grandma would not be happy. Um, and, and so if you feel stuck, it's because you've stopped moving. But I'm here to remind you that God has a call on your life. Hear me out. God has a call on your life. Tell your neighbor because you're not convincing me that you believe it today. God has a call on your life. You are chosen and you're anointed. Tell your neighbor, you're chosen and you're anointed. Good job. Good. I hear a little voice over there. The enemy, the, the one thing that I've learned in my time with the Lord and, and, and serving Jesus is that if the enemy cannot take you out, he can make you very tired. He can make you very tired. He can make you very weary. He will try his best to take you out with weariness or, or just, or just cut, you know, he'll keep throwing, you know, uh, bomb after bomb or arrow after arrow. And you keep getting up. You're like, no, I'm not done. I have a legacy. I have a call. No, I have to be able to minister to that young girl. That person that needs to hear Jesus is waiting just for me. I remember, I think I saw Gary. Is he in here? Awesome. I love this story that um, my husband would tell about my mother-in-law. She was a little thug. She was tiny but mighty. She was a thug because I remember that when Gary was doing what Gary was doing, I think he was like at the bar or something, right? And then she stormed into that bar and she went and got her spiritual son. And she probably said, not on my watch. Not on my watch. And I was like, you know what? We need some spiritual gangsters in this house. We need some spiritual gangsters in this house. Because you know what? If the enemy sees that we're not serious about the call of God in our life and our kids, he will come after your kids. I promise you, he will come after your children. He will come after your children. The enemy has tried to come after my children, and it gets me so angry. I get so mad. I get so upset. I'm like, he, this fool think he's, he's messing with the wrong mom. I'm like, oh, no, not on my watch. 
not on my watch. Because you know what? What I have learned, what my mom taught me, what my mother-in-law taught me, what the women of God who have gone before me taught me was to get on my knees and pray. To get on my knees and cry out to Jesus. To get on my knees until I am so tired. Until I am tired of being sick and tired. I'm like, Lord, my Redeemer, come and fill my life. Lord, come and save my children. you got to be desperate today. You have to be desperate, moms. If you want to see your baby saved, you got to pray. You got to fast. You got to fight. You cannot give up. It is not the time to throw in the towel. Tell your neighbor, it is not the time to throw in your towel. Maybe it's losing your way as a leader or needing to figure out where you are on your journey in life. And you're asking, Lord, why are you quiet? Why are you quiet? I cannot hear you. I cannot sense you. I cannot feel you. And he's probably just telling you, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just keep seeking me. Keep seeking me. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. The Lord say, keep knocking. Keep knocking. Don't give up. The reason why God doesn't show us our whole entire life is because if we see the picture, if we see our life, we're going to get scared. And we're going to be like, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm, I'm not doing that. No, Lord, mm -mm, I see you. I see you having me over here pray for people. Uh, Lord, I see you over here having me, uh, you know, talk to this person. I have you, uh, you're over here making me lead a small group. I can't do that. When God doesn't show us the entire story of our life. It's just piece by piece by piece. Literally, my husband and I are in this season where it's like, what do you have for us? What do you have for our life? And it's day by day, moment by moment, moment by moment that I've learned that I cannot control anything. I cannot control anything. The Lord is already in our tomorrows. And he already knows. But if he gives us our entire picture for our life, we're going to get scared. We're going to retreat. We're going to walk away. And we're going to be like, no, God. Maybe it's those counseling sessions and those impromptu parent-teacher meetings. Miss so-and-so, your kid is hitting the other kid. Your, hit is, your kid is biting this kid. And you're like, oh, when is it going to stop? Oh, my gosh, my kid, like, hit another kid. They pulled their hair. They're fighting. And maybe you're in that season right now. It's okay. Tell your neighbor, it's okay. It's going to be okay. My mother-in-law would always tell me that. She's like, you can do it. <laughs> she would always say, Trina, you can do it. I'm like, Okay. Okay. <laughs> I remember at 18, um, we were at the 320 Harris Avenue. When I turned 18, I bawled my eyes out at the altar. I came to the altar and I was just crying because I did not want to turn 18. I did not want to turn 18. I knew all the responsibilities that came with it. I knew, like, I had to grow up. I had to move out of my mom's bed and, and get married one day and, like, all the things. And I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to, right? My mother-in-law was like, you can do it. You can do it. Tell your neighbor, you can do it. You can do it. Maybe you're in a season of asking the Lord why. I was literally back there. And I was, I said, Lord. Why, why am I speaking today? Because I'm a mom, right? But I was like, Lord, you know, why, have, why did you choose me? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worthy to do this. I'm not, you know, we're not worthy. God's worthy. God's worthy. All I've given him was my yes. And today all he wants is your yes this morning. It's in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read that again because it's so important to read the word of God very slowly so we can get that in our hearts. It says, do not be anxious about anything. I am a person who definitely has struggled with anxiety to the point where you hyperventilate and you, you just begin to like, you have to get down on a ball and curl up. And you're like, I can't breathe. I've been there. How many have been there before? I've been in those situations where I've been so anxious about tomorrow, maybe it's bills, maybe it's your child, maybe 
it's your marriage, or maybe it's an unsafe family member. Maybe, maybe it's a, in your workplace, people are just persecuting you. Whatever it is, maybe you have struggled or you experienced anxiety. I have been there. I know what it feels like. But I've also been there where God has delivered me. I've also seen where God has come through. And I have cried out to the Lord. I said, God, I need you right now. I need you right now. And it says, but in every situation, in every situation, not just some situations, church, in every situation, by prayer and petition, the Lord's giving us a recipe. He says, by prayer and petition, bring it to the Lord. Whatever you're struggling with, bring it to the feet of Jesus. Because he will be there with you. With thanksgiving. You're like, with thanksgiving, God, I'm struggling with anxiety. And you want me to be thankful in this moment? What the heck? But it says, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God. And the shalom of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Memorize that word. Write it out. Speak that word of God over your family. Speak that word over your children. What a relief that, we can, that when we can request anything to God, he's always there. He's listening with his best interest in mind. Maybe God is silent right now or you're not, or, or, or not saying yes to a specific request for us, but he's saying wait. It's, it's important to realize that during that winter season, it's not all bad. When bad things happen to good people, the people of God know to bring all the bad things that are happening to a good father. That's what I've learned is that when bad things happen to good people, when, the, when, when my niece, my goddaughter, Aaliyah, she was 17, I believe, she got cancer. And I just seen my sister go through so much turmoil and heartache and pain. And her body was so frail and she was, it looked like a skeleton. And I said, God, why do these things happen to good people? Why do these things happen to a precious, a precious, you know, a little girl? And I was, and we never understand that no mother should ever have to bury their child. Never. But when bad things happen to good people, the people of God know to bring all the bad to a good father. So whatever you're going through today and you're like, God, why is this happening to me? God, why me? Why? I'm faithful. I'm faithful day in and day out. Why do I struggle? Why do I feel this pain? And I cry and I'm, I get emotional and I cry because I've been there. I know what it's like. But I'm here to tell you that God, but God has seen us time and time again and has delivered us. He has delivered us and he has come to remind us that you're not alone. That he is for you. That he reminds us that he will never leave us and nor forsake us. It's also an important time during those winter seasons, those dark, lonely seasons. It's important to remember that it's a time of deep reflection, of restoration and healing. And healing. You know, when, when, um, when my mother-in-law had passed away, I would call my sister and I'd be like, sis, what do I do? Like, what do I say, like, to my husband? And, and she was like, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Just be there. Just be there. I was like, okay. You know, because sometimes we always just want to say things just for the sake of saying things, right, when people are grieving and they're hurting. And I remember her saying, don't say anything. Just be there. And I was like, all right. We'll just be there. And it's during those times where I begin to see, you know, um, a little bit of a healing take place. And when this happened, when the passing of my, my mother-in-law, we realized, like, oh, my gosh, we really need to get some counseling, some grief counseling for my children and for my husband and for our whole family. Because it's so important that what I've learned is that when someone goes home to be with the Lord, in order to keep them their memory alive, you have to talk about them every day. You have to talk about them all the time. That's how you keep their memory alive. It's so important. I remember we did that with my niece. Aaliyah, and we still talk about her, and I know she's in the hands of Jesus. She's healed, she's set free, and she is whole. 
It prepares us to win our season. It prepares us to protect and salvage the most important things, the health and the well-being of our children's spiritual life. If we really think about it, it may be the most important season of all seasons. And the last season is spring. Spring brings such a new beginning. It says in Proverbs 2, 6 through 8, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. Guarding the paths of justice and he preserves the way of his godly ones. Oh, that's such a beautiful scripture. No matter how long a hard season may feel, eventually you begin to experience the newness and the rebirth of your call and the anointing on your life. The abilities and the zeal and the passion will once again come back to you and they will be restored. Maybe you're on autopilot and you're coasting, but I want to tell you, it's your time to rise up. To rise up from your sleeping and your slumber. To rise up and to answer the call of God in your life. To rise up and say, you know what, I'm going to take back what the enemy has stolen. I'm going to take back what the enemy has tried to, to destroy. It is not time to just coast and just to be on autopilot. But it's time to actively, to go into the enemy's camp and to take back what the enemy has tried to steal. I say try to steal because he hasn't done it yet. But he will continue to try. God is calling for men and women to rise up. And I know it's supposed to be a Mother's Day message. But it's a message for all people here today. It's a message for the church. God is calling us to rise up again. Maybe you've been sitting for a little bit too long and you've gone complacent. You're comfortable where you're at. I don't want to be challenged right now. I don't want, my, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers right now. I'm comfortable. I'm complacent. The first thing you have to do is just get up. Is just get up. Just get up. Just get up and do it all over again. Whether it's the birth of a child or coming into a new, maybe a developmental stage in your parenthood journey or maybe uh, in your marriage or whatever it is. Spring feels like, a, it has like a, a childlike curiosity about it. The new smells, the new seasons, the flowers, all the pretty dainty things, right? It's beautiful. New found hope blossoms and it blooms. Joshua, let's stand today. We're going to stand today. I'm going to read the scripture. In Joshua 1 9, I'm going to read this scripture. And as the worship team makes their way up here, I know I gave you a lot of scriptures today, but it's good. <laughs> we need more scripture, we need more word, the word of God. Hmm, hallelujah. I'm on, um, as well as we're all standing, can I have all of our leaders and our small group leaders, we're going to come up here today and we're going to get ready to, to pray. But before we do, I'm going to read this scripture. Hmm, this is one of my favorite scriptures. And I think before my last message I had shared about, I love anything that has to do with like military stuff or like battle and fighting and because it's like, Gosh, it's such, it's such a beautiful journey to be a Christian. It's such an amazing uh, journey just to be on a, in a season of, like, uh, of, of warfare and battle, right, and fighting and taking up your spiritual armor, putting on the whole spiritual armor of God. And I just love it so much because it's like I came to fight. I came to do battle. I came to wrestle with the enemy and to remind them that he has no place. He has no place in our family, in our church, in our marriage, in our life. And so I take it very, very, very seriously. It's like he's going to try to tempt our children. He's going to try to divert them. He's going to try to pull them out in the world. In Joshua 1.9 it says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
Do you believe that today? Mm. I believe it. I believe that today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and we're going to. We're going to worship the Lord in song, and then we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you today, God, and we just give you glory. All honor and all praise belongs to you and you alone today, God. Be magnified, Jesus. Come on, if you are comfortable, feel comfortable, just lift your hands in this place today. Hey, it's the Fish family. We are so glad you were able to join us for our online experience. We want to stay connected with you, and one way you can do that is to follow us on all socials at Teenage Nation Also, if you have never been to our Sunday services, I encourage you to come to our 10.30 a.m. services every Sunday. God bless.